This is this. There's a group of us shuffling around corridors, all mumbling to one another, saying, "How big a stink is this?" And some people are. I, I reviewed a document that was sent to the European Commission last week, just before I came over here, from a very balanced uh, Dutch lighting engineer when he wrote to the European Commission saying, "We've got to rethink this," and so. The group of us that are shuffling around, some of them are saying, this is an issue on the same level as, as asbestos. This is a public health issue and it's big. Interestingly, um, where do you also find vast numbers of mitochondria? You find them in sperm. So there is a greater concentration of sperm with abnormal swimming capacity and abnormal morphology in those mice. And the testicles have abnormal morphologies. This is clearly telling us that it's not just the LED, it's the LED range, which is 420 to 440. It's a specific range that the mitochondria absorb. And it's the absence of the red light to counter balance that. Got it. So this is so important for people to hear. Uh, and I just want to reiterate something you said earlier. Uh, it just, it's really hovering in my mind. It's so important that we, I think people need to hear it again, which is it may not be that short wavelength light is detrimental to mitochondria uh, per se. It's that in the absence of balanced light, you're, uh, you're taking whatever mechanisms that short wavelength light have on mitochondria and you're, you're tipping the seesaw in that direction. And the other side of the seesaw would be weighted by long wavelength lights. Um, the, the balance between these wavelengths is really what's key.